genes behind fatal heart condition identified. Pulmonary arterial hypertension is a nasty disease that affects around 6,500 people in the UK. Researchers say they have identified genes that are responsible for a fatal heart condition that can only be cured by heart and lung transplants. Pulmonary arterial hypertension, PAH, kills half of those with the condition within five years, but little was known about its cause. PAH causes the arteries carrying blood from the heart to the lungs to harden and thicken, eventually leading to heart failure. Researchers analyzed the genomes of more than 1,000 PAH patients and found that mutations in five genes were responsible for the disease. In people suffering from PAH, these five genes fail to produce the proteins that are needed for the structure, function, and regulation of the body's tissues. Now that the genes have been identified, the next step will be to develop new ways to treat the condition. Get your recommended daily dose right now and keep watching. Uh-oh. New research suggests that the healing process following breast cancer surgery may be triggering cancer in other areas of the body to spread. Studies of breast cancer patients indicate that they are prone to metastatic relapse 12 to 18 months after surgical growth removal. It's believed that dormant cancer cells in other sites previously kept in check by the immune system become active as the body focuses on healing its wound. Experiments on mice found that while T-cells stalled the growth of injected cancer cells, simulated surgeries in areas far from the cancer resulted in increased tumor growth and incidence. Mice given anti-inflammatory drugs during or after surgery developed significantly smaller tumors, which often disappeared completely. Early research in humans shows the same strong association between anti-inflammatory drug use and a decline in metastasis, but more studies are needed to confirm the data. Paralyzed man stands again after experimental treatment. A man paralyzed from a bad accident has regained the ability to stand and move his legs after receiving an experimental epidural treatment. Andrew Mies was paralyzed from the chest down after his spine was broken at the 6th and 7th cervical vertebrae in a motorcycle accident nearly 10 years ago. Mies has spent four years in physical rehabilitation, but has also been receiving an experimental treatment called spinal cord epidural stimulation. The device sends electrical signals to motor neurons telling them to move. At the end of the study, Mies was able to move his legs, stand on both feet or one foot entirely on his own. The results from the study show that the nervous system may be more resilient than previously thought. Fetal pacemaker ready for human trials. Researchers at the University of Southern California first developed a micro pacemaker for fetuses five years ago, and the device is now ready for its first human trial. The fetal pacemaker is a slim cylinder with components that include a single transistor relaxation oscillator, an epoxy capsule, and a small lithium battery. The pacemaker is implanted into a fetus through a 3.8 millimeter diameter insertion cannula. The battery is able to power the device for about a week. When the power runs low, a high-powered field generator can be used to generate a radio frequency magnetic field outside the body. This wirelessly recharges the battery through inductive coupling. The device, which has been successfully tested in sheep fetuses in the past, was granted humanitarian use in 2015 by the FDA. Man's paralyzed limb reanimated with the help of a brain chip. A team from Ohio has made a medical breakthrough, successfully developing technology that allows brain signals to bypass a spinal injury and transmit straight to the muscles. When Ian Burkhart broke his neck four years ago, it damaged his spinal cord and left him paralyzed from the chest down. He retained some movement in his shoulders and biceps, but lost sensation in his hands and legs. To help him, doctors inserted a chip the size of an eraser head into his motor cortex, the area of the brain that controls hand movements. The chip records brain signals for specific hand movements and sends these to a computer via a port on the back of Burkhart's head. Once the signals are decoded, they're transmitted to an arm sleeve studded with electrodes. The electrodes stimulate the muscles and allow them to move. The system, called NeuroLife, has allowed Burkhart to make six different hand and wrist motions. It marks the first time a paralyzed man has been able to regain movement using recorded brain signals.